Hi everybody, my name is Joan Hugh. I'm one of the librarians here at the Maine Billie Jean King Library. And thank you for tuning in to watch my program, Super Succulents. Today I want to show you how easy it is to fill containers with succulents of all different types, size, shape, and color. I've been dabbling with succulents for about 10 years now. I've read a few good books on succulents and cacti. My favorite happens to be the one my husband gave me for my birthday a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, the book no longer is in print, is not in the library. It's by Kathy Tuttle. But we do have great books on seconds here that I've checked out from the library. I have to say, I don't always follow what the experts say about succulents, good succulent care. My attitude is, hey, if it falls out and it's still healthy, plug it back in there again. And if it's withering, dying, or dead, please take it out and replace it with a heartier succulent. I'm just so lucky, succulents are so forgiving. They even survive in a state of neglect occasionally. So a couple days ago, I filled four pots here with soil. The expert claimed he should use cacti potting soil. Well, I just told my husband, go to Home Depot or Lowe's and pick up a big bag of miracle Grow potting soil that usually has compost in it. My succulents don't care. They seem pretty happy with it. Also, uh, Succulents do like a lot of sun, okay? So give it at least six hours of sun, okay? And they, succulents per se, you should actually pot them in clay pots because they usually come with a hole in the bottom, okay? This promotes good drainage. And also the clay pots retain the heat in the wintertime. But I have to admit, about 95% of my pots don't have holes in the bottom. Yes, if I was ambitious, I could drill a hole in the bottom. Mm, but I'm lazy. I'm just very careful how much water I give them. I know overwatering kills succulents like crazy. So at the beginning, I just water them in lightly, maybe once a week, eventually every other week. And when they're fully established, once a month or every other month, depending on the season of the year. So here I'm gonna begin with my first pot here. Okay, I'm gonna water it lightly with, the soil lightly with water here. Makes it easy for me to dig a hole in it. You could use any kind of stick. I prefer a chopstick because I have plenty of them around my house. So I'm gonna poke a hole in the center here. Okay, my first succulent is gonna be my favorite rosette, which is a purple crest aeonium. I love it because of the color. Okay, and this succulent is all over the place. Trim it just a little bit here. And all I do is dig it in there like that. I'm gonna make this one very symmetrical. So I found this second here. I trim pack all of them before the show. I'm gonna trim so the same size. Show you how I do it. Oops. And then I'm gonna put this since I want it symmetrical. Put this at a slant here because I want this to drape over a little bit here. Okay, I'm going to stick it in like this here and stick it in there pretty tightly here. Since I want it symmetrical, I'm going to put this on the opposite side. Okay, I'm going to do it like this here. Okay, I'm going to continue going on. I pick this second here. And I'm gonna put a hole on this side here. And I'll pluck it in like that. And on the opposite side. Put it all there. I'll pluck it in like that. And I continue the same thing over and over again until I'm happy that the arrangement looks full. This one here, I'm gonna make it a little lower here. Pluck in this little second here like that. And on the opposite ends, I'm gonna do something like this here. Stick it in there. And I think I'll add a little jade here. I like my jade here. Hide here. This here. And this up here. Another 
one. And I'll look at my arrangement, and if I decide I want to fill in a little bit more, that's what I do. I like to cover all the sore up here. And I'll tuck in this one right here. And on this side here, I'm over here. That's my arrangement. So when I'm happy with the arrangement, I just water it lightly. I try to water the soil and not the plant itself. This one's a little tight here. Uh, careful not to overwater. Try to water the soil and not the plant. The leaf doesn't like this water because it becomes moldy. That's my first pot here. I set this one aside here. My second pot, I'm going to use a clay pot. This one does have a hole in the bottom. And this clay pot here. A little water here. Again, I can dig a hole. I'm going to stick this time. In the bottom here. I'm going to use my fire stick second this time. This fire stick second turns fiery red in full sun. Unfortunately, my area hasn't had much sun lately, so it turns back to green. In full sun, it is fiery red. You got to be careful with fire stick succulent. When you make a cut in the stem, you'll notice a white milky substance. Well, this substance can be very toxic. If you get near your eyes, they can blind you, it says in Google. If you get in your skin, you have scented skin, it could cause a rash. So be very careful with it. Okay, watch it. You maybe wear a long sleeve, especially gloves. Don't touch your face. And wash your hands afterwards. Since this sucking is very top heavy, I'm going to cut it a little bit more. Here's that white substance here. And all I do is just plot it all the way to the bottom and sink it in there like that. When I have a big pot, I usually put four or five these together and it looks magnificent and very full. I'm going to pop, pat it down here so it just stays down there. This fire stick sucking goes rampant all over town. Landscapers like to use it because not only does it grow tall, but it always grows wide. I'm forever cutting down my fire stick sucking. Hey, my third pot I'm going to use another rosette, rosettes I love. Okay, this rosette is going to be my cabbage rosette. I call it my cabbage rosette because it reminds me of a cabbage. Okay, I lightly water it. I'm going to dig a hole in the middle. Okay, my cabbage rosette looks like this. I think I might try to trim this one here like that. And this one here is top heavy, so I like the stem to be very long. I'll cut it a little bit here. And all I do is just stick it right in there. Okay. Cabbage rosettes grow rampant outside in full sun. They have lots of little babies called pups. And I have it in my front yard in a wave, and it looks magnificent. They just keep growing. And my last pot is a cute little teacup. Since it is miniature, I had to pick a small sucker. I'm going to wet it a little bit here. I use my chopstick again. So I had to pick a sucker that's very, very small. So I'm going to put a trail of three of them together. This has a little purpley blue shade to it. Just stick it down there. The second one here, just push it down there. And my third one here, I just stick it down there. Like you end up getting only a water room once a week, eventually, twice a month, fully established, maybe 
like every other month, depending on the season. But oh, they love sunlight. About six hours worth. I usually keep them in the house for a whole month and eventually they all go outside because they thrive outside. And that's my third one. Actually, my fourth one. I have to say, Suckins make fabulous gifts for anyone of any age, for any occasion. Okay, what I did about a year ago, and then you could do it with family or friends. You have some people over. I had something, what I call my pot party. I invited my cousin's kids to come over. They were ready to go back to school, the dorm. I said, come over, I'm gonna have a pot party. I have lots of pots I got real cheap at garage sale. And I have all these suckers that I have to trim because it gets so leggy. So they came over, all three girls each were able to make three pots to take back to college. So you can do something like that with families and friends. They may actually make great displays inside the house too, because they are off a variety from the green house plants you have. I think a good copper conversation here. I love this hobby because I like to see things grow, and hopefully you do too. They are a very drought smart plant, and hopefully get hooked on like I have. And I want to thank you for watching this program, and hopefully you will think about succulents next time you want to plant something green. Thank you.